Welcome back to Exquisitely Aligned. I'm Gina Meyer Vincent, the host and your personal soul shifter, here to help you define and design the future you desire and deserve. The one where essentially you become exactly what's missing in the world. And today I'm excited to introduce you to Abby because she has done exactly that. Abby Parmenter from Lit Up and Limitless. Abby is an Instagram strategist and certified mindset coach who helps online service providers enjoy content creation so they can authentically sell their high ticket services on Instagram. Welcome, Abby. I'm delighted to share this time with you. Hi, Gina. Thank you so, so much for having me on. I am really, really excited for this conversation with you. So, Abby, I know bits and pieces from working with you that have excited me, and I see there's a lot of overlap. And today I was wondering if we can give a voice to what it's like to be watching the competition. I like to say in my business that it starts when we're very young, like a toddler doing a, a, a little dance or possibly a temper tantrum, right, where they're looking for attention, then someone my daughter's age might be looking for approval from her teen peers. Then we go into maybe our career and we're looking for acknowledgement, accolades, mm -hmm. and we're constantly looking over our shoulder. And I know you work with this a lot. So I'd love to hear from you. You know, uh, we'll explore everything uh, that has to do with all of this because I think it goes into, you know, what does it look like? Some people don't always know they're doing it, but I think it's common to, especially now with social media, to always be checking what others are doing. So I'd love to hear from you any which direction you want to go in, because I know we have plenty to talk about. Yeah. So I think that this is a really important topic, especially when people are trying to discover and maybe share who they are, because when you even just using social media in general, right? You're consuming a lot of other people's thoughts, opinions, yeah. strategies, ideas, suggestions for how you should do things, tips, tricks, hacks, and it's fine <laughs> and it's great. And we're so lucky to um, have access to the internet and be able to learn so much from other people. But I think that it can become a little bit almost obsessive and it can yes. start to dilute who you are because yes. it, um you're mixing up how you feel and what you think and who you are in your brain with other mm -hmm. people and then it becomes a jumbled mess and that's when people feel confused about who they are but also really confused about maybe what they're here to do and what makes them different um, mm -hmm. and probably one of the biggest misconceptions about looking at the competition and this is something that's taught in most marketing strategies and what people expect is to you know kind of see what your competitors are up to and look at mm -hmm. what other people are up to to find out what's different about you but that's the worst way of doing it because you can't find what's different about you by by looking at other people so I think it's um been a learning curve for me in my life um and I think that it really impacts everybody from any background with any career and any lifestyle that they have. I think it's really can be detrimental. Yes, I agree. So my background is I was a department store buyer and we had to shop the competition always. So, mm -hmm. you know, when you went in at the beginning of the season, you would see what they bought. Then you would come in at the end of the season, see what didn't sell. And then mm -hmm. as a futurist, as a department store buyer, you're hoping that you hired somebody who's a futurist, which I am. And um, I'm always ahead of the, of the curve, which can be not always the most comfortable thing. But um, when you have that ability to take what's happening now and be able to envision what does that trend look like in the future? How is that trend continuing or, or dropping? But I will tell you, as much as it sounded fun to get out of the office and have a budget and go buy things, you know, for your business uh, to check out the competition, I always came back exhausted. And, mm. and I later, you know, I always hindsight's twenty twenty, but the more I became exquisitely aligned myself, because this we're talking in my early uh, mid yeah, early to late 20s as a department yeah. store buyer right out of college, 
you know, it was this always looking over the shoulder and, you know, who's coming up behind me. I got to be, you know, and um, growing up in New York, I was competitive. I went to a very large high school with 1,504 of us graduating. Wow. Yes, it was huge. It was fun because everywhere you turned, you could make a new friend if you were like me. But for yeah. some people, it was a little intimidating. But mm. the thing was, there was always competition because there were so many students vying for you know, first chair flutist, which I tried for, didn't get, but you know, all the, whatever it was, luckily I was not trying to be a football player, um, <laughs> but it, it, you know, I think it started from being in such a large high school, but now with social media, I think you're right. I love, I love, so it exhausted me. I knew that from a young age, what would, what would you say, that you notice for yourself and that you see for your clients also? Yeah, I think the journey is really different um, as a user just who is using social media and not necessarily for business purposes um, than it is for somebody who is an entrepreneur because I think mm -hmm. that the way that we use social media as users, it can be really damaging, especially for young people in terms of... Yeah seeing lots of things that aren't necessarily real um having <laughs> access to having access to things that you might not have seen before yeah. so where you know maybe 50 years ago not even 50 years ago 20 years ago right if you um weren't somebody who got to go on luxury holidays you weren't going right. on luxury holidays but you weren't also seeing them on everyone's instagram story yeah. or facebook so i think that or maybe you know, you're being exposed to opinions that you don't yeah. like and you don't agree with. Um, so I think as a user, it can be complicating, especially when you're, um, for everyone who's trying right. to figure out who they are and what they think, um, mm. there's that. But then if you're somebody who um, is kind of carving your own path and you're a business owner, I think mm. that it can become more obsessive because... Um, right it's like a you're promoting yourself and you're trying to position yourself as different um but you're trying to maybe see what everyone else is doing and you don't know that you're doing it you are right. scrolling maybe calling it inspiration or putting the label on it of research yeah. um but actually what it is is it's your you're not feeling sure about yourself and yeah. so you're trying to figure out what's the secret that these other people have that i don't have and, and how can i replicate that and, and the problem there is that then you aren't being yourself and mm -hmm. that you haven't sat enough with what you think to, to feel confident in that. And that definitely happened for me. And it happens for all of my clients yeah. to a certain degree. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, it's, it's interesting to see. And I think over maybe the past couple of months, I've realized actually that's just the worst thing <laughs> that you can do um, as somebody who is really unique and everybody yeah. just has their own uniqueness and gifts and if you spend time looking at what everybody else is great at right. you can't get what you're good at right right i mean it it um i love what you everything you've said and um there's many points that i wrote down so let's start with not real mm. you had uh because I think sometimes people think, well, if I saw it with my own two eyes, it used to be, right? Yeah. That if we heard it third person, we, d we don't know if it's real. And now we think it's real if we see it. But with all the different apps that can zhuzh up your face, I, I'll never forget my dear friend in Charlotte. We had taken a picture. I don't know. It, the three of us always celebrated our birthdays together. So we were celebrating a birthday and she's like, oh, no, hold on. And right there in the restaurant, she was using Facetune, I think. It's, is that what it's called? Yeah. And she, she, she's like, oh, OK, I'm removing wrinkles, la, la, la. And I was like, oh, and she's like, here, I'll do you. And I was like, oh, don't do that. And she goes, what yeah. do you mean don't do that? I said, well, if I look like that and you post it on on social media, and then I bump into someone and they see me for real, they're going to think, oh, she looks awful. You know, what happened? 
after her. I said, don't do that because, you know, I don't want people to think that uh, that's what I look like, you know? Yeah. And I was, I was younger then, but uh, it, it just made me laugh. And she just couldn't imagine why I didn't want to, you know, zhuzh up my face and remove any spots, wrinkles, whatever, hair out of alignment. But I think that, you know, for me, it's like, I'd rather maybe not look perfect. And maybe I look better when they meet me in person when I'm not trying to pose for a camera, you know. Um, but I think that there is that element of understanding. It's not always easy to explain to people that you can cut and splice video really well. Uh, yeah. Even I can do it and I'm not an expert, but there are apps <laughs> to help us, right? Um, thin somebody down or or add weight to them or change their hair color, um, yeah. you know, um, and it and it may not be real. So I love I love when you said that, Abby. Yeah. And, and I think that the real piece as well, it goes beyond like how people look, because I'm someone who grew up on Snapchat, um, yeah. which is like filters were fun back in the day they were like you could put a dog filter on your face or you could mm -hmm. have I remember the time when the first filter came out on Snapchat and I was at school and me and my friend were having so much fun with this like monster filter that when you opened your mouth you turned into a monster right. and, um, I think over time it turned into okay we can change ourselves to look like this how can we change ourselves to slowly look different and then over time yeah. it's become like how can we change how we look um, but, and that's something that I still find difficult because I grew up with filters. So all my friends use them and I'm slowly yeah. trying to kind of fill them out of my life because it's, it's unhelpful, but it's also, um, someone could post Instagram stories, you know, they could post a couple throughout the day and they could be having the worst day that they've ever had <laughs> in their life, but they could be posting their morning coffee and their beach walk, or they could be posting that they, you know, um, were going on this date with this boy or whatever, whatever happens. Right. Um, and you could think, Oh gosh, that person is just living their best life, but it's not always real. And they could be sat there. They could have been crying all day. And I think that, you know, that, that that can be damaging because we're looking at other people thinking gosh they're they're killing it their life's amazing look at them they're at the gym they're doing this they're traveling here they're they just hit 100k in their business but you mm -hmm. don't know what's going on behind the scenes so i think right. that as as a user that's that's really damaging because it doesn't tell the whole story um, right and i think that people need to keep that in mind when they're consuming anything tv yes no, I agree with you wholeheartedly. I didn't mean to be laughing here for those of you on, on Apple. Um, <laughs> I am trying to keep the laughter down so the mic doesn't pick it up. But um, you could see my head chuckling because it's so true. And I think that that's the element for me with Exquisitely Aligned. It's like that deep fulfillment is mm. not just in those quick three stories of the day. It's wow. the overall of what somebody feels in their life and not oftentimes I meet people and they're like, I want work life balance. Well, there's so much more than just work and what, what you're classifying as a four letter word life. I mean, for mm. me, it's, it's your spirituality. If, if that's something you desire, it's this um, connection when you go outside to the plants and the trees and the, your neighbors, even yeah. to uh, having those moments where, you know, I posted something recently. I went outside to, I think I was eating lunch and there were five hawks just, you know, flying. They were, um, I forgot what the word is when they're, um, I was going to say riding the waves. I need to get on. <laughs> but, you know, the, the, the um the currents in the air which are not waves but whatever the word is and they were just i had to take a video because i was like this is so impressive they're just like you know letting the letting the energy around them take them wherever it goes and it was fun mm -hmm. to watch them cross each other you know it's those moments that fill yeah. us and not like you were saying they could be 
feeling lonely, sad, crying all day, nervous, whatever, depressed, um, fill in the blank, frightened. Um, yeah, I love that. And uh, what else did I write myself? Because I had written a couple different things. Um, like when you were talking about the entrepreneurs sc- scrolling through, yeah, leaving that they're doing research. I love that. And um, I think oftentimes people are like, what is your competition doing? And I've had people ask me that. And I'm like, you know, depending on the person, if yeah. I know them well enough that I feel like they're not here to judge, I'll say to them, I really don't feel like I have competition. Mm. I mean, I, people either like me or they don't. It's very, it's, you know, they, they see me or they hear me speak or they bump into me somewhere or I'm presenting with the microphone as a keynote and I, they either like the message or they they don't like my voice, my hair, my makeup, my jewelry, my clothing, whatever. And I like that. I like the fact that I can cause a rift from, yeah, these people are like, okay, she has something a little interesting. I'm going to listen more or lean in. And the others are like, oh, she's crazy. You know, <laughs> they run away. and it's good because I think when we are constantly, who's our competition, who's, you know, um, it takes us down a path, like I said earlier, where we become exhausted. Think about how much time somebody could spend scrolling, doing the research. And like I wrote words that you had said, not feeling sure. Mm. What is their secret sauce? What is their, you know, it factor, their X factor? Um, And I don't, I don't think we can find that when we look outside None. answer what ours is. I think it takes us further away from what ours, our X factor is. A hundred percent. And I think um, there was a time when I had just started my business um, mm. and I was kind of scrolling through the, through the feed and I saw this post and I thought, oh, that's a nice post. And then I read it a little bit more and a little bit more. And I said, that's a nice post because I wrote this and I posted it. <laughs> so so somebody had taken, taken my post. It was a very, very, very personal, specific post about my journey and how far I was. Mm-hmm. And I realized in this moment, this girl had copy and pasted my post. Okay, but she didn't, so she didn't share... I found this fascinating. Abby Parmenter said no, you know, no, no. She, she used it as her own. Yeah. Yeah. And at the time, at that time, um, I was just getting started. So I was so triggered by this because I was like, of course. this is my story. This is my thing. Um, but actually, when I reflected on it a little bit more, what I realized is that, um, you know, if somebody is inspired by you and i'm not necessarily saying that that's what was going on there but you know take that as a compliment but also the importance of having your own story and your own message and strategy because you know if somebody chose to work with her because of somebody else's words um it's not it's not meant to be and it's not going to work out you know so i don't believe that and if I look at somebody else's post and think that's amazing, I would never now, especially never think, how can I make this, you know, how can I do this? How can I, how can I make this mine? Because I think right. that we all have a, an own message and that mm-hmm. message is what is going to resonate with the right people for us. Yes. Um, and I, and I think it kind of leads into like abundance and feeling yes. that there's more than enough to go around because I know that there are so many amazing, amazing, amazing people that do what I do. Um, mm. And the people that choose to work with them, that's just because they, they love those people and they want to work with right. those people and the people that want to work with me or feel connected to me. It's because it's because of who I am. So I mm. think that um, when people scroll for the, 
looking at the competition and what is this person doing and oh is this this is this the hack to instagram is this how we do it i think it's just it just you're sabotaging yourself so massively um from from finding your people because your people are there like they are um and it's the same with friendship groups if you try and be someone that you're not you're going to attract people that aren't aligned with you um in for relationships if you're pretending to be someone you're not you're going to attract people that aren't aligned with you um and i think it goes like for everything right yeah i agree i agree and you know i think the sabotage part is well first i'm sa- i'm sad that happened to you um was it somebody you actually knew it was somebody i knew who had yeah. a bit much bigger following than me well then that's a really big compliment yeah <laughs> in the end in the end that's how I see it at the time I was right like, no. but then well, now- it, it is and it's it that's one of the things that's difficult when you put things out there I know for my branding I have a not as big a story but um you know you know my brand very well uh, mm. at this point and Um, because I come from the fashion industry, I talk about social norms as one size fits all because Mm -hmm. I like to think about, you know, how you try to buy a one size fits all thing as a woman. And it, I mean, my daughter's four foot 10, she's done growing, right? My son's Mm -hmm. six foot four. He's, we think, we hope he's finished growing. (laughs) Um, Otherwise we have to get a new front door now. And, um, (laughs) but you know, one size doesn't fit everybody. And so I had responded to a post somebody made and I, I used that in my comment. And then the next thing I know, she started using it in her, uh, in her posts as if it was her terminology. And I thought I was a little offended, but then I thought it doesn't go anywhere with who she is because she didn't come from a fashion background. So she can't, yeah. it's, so for her to use just that nugget doesn't go with anything else for her. What, well, she didn't really create a brand from what yeah. I saw, but I found it interesting. And then I thought to myself, well, like you said, you inspired somebody, right? That's <laughs> a, copying is the, what is it? The greatest compliment, you know? Yeah. So, um, yeah, Yeah. but the other thing I had written was the sabotage piece. And Mm. I think that's, that's the biggest piece. I think it goes after a while, you can only for so long keep up this, I don't know, role that you're playing, like you said, yeah, in, in a relationship, in a, you know, gosh, if it's in a marriage where that's Mm -hmm. illegal, you know, uh, binding relationship or a friendship, like you mentioned. Yeah. In the end, you're aligning with people that really aren't who you are. And it becomes for me, unfulfilling would be the word, Mm -hmm. you know, Uh, plus for me to act, I'm not a good actress. Uh, for me to act would take a lot of energy. Um, yeah. You know, my family knows if I'm excited or I'm a little disappointed. You know, like I, said to my, I said to my husband this morning, I went into the fridge and I asked you to make more of the sauce of what we cooked for dinner last night. We cooked together, which is not normal. Usually I'm the only cook or my kids are cooking, but uh, with our son out of the house and our daughter soon to be out of the house and very busy, it was he and I later than normal cooking together. Mm-hmm. And I said, I, you know, we ended up needing a little more of that for leftovers. Mm-hmm. And I said, I asked you to, you know, saute up the tomatoes again. And, and then like, he's like, you did. <laughs> <laughs> But, you know, like you sit there and you're like, oh, my gosh. Um, And I don't know why, how I got onto that. But, you know, it's important. Yes. Um, So what else had I written? Um, Oh, when you were triggered. Let's talk about that, because I do think uh, social media, um, people, emails, anything can be triggering. And, and certainly that triggered me last night with Mark because 
I was like, do you listen like this to your boss? Because if so, I'm afraid you might not have a job any longer, you know, like yeah. how, how is it both ears work when you're, when you're working? It, like, yeah. is it my voice? Is it the red lipstick? What is, what is it? Um, is it the fact that I'm a female? Is it the fact that it was late and you were hungry? Where, where did we, where was the disconnect, you know? But yeah. um, I think, I think social media definitely can trigger us, especially if we're not in balance, not aligned. Mm. Like you were saying, sad, feeling lonely. And I believe feeling lonely doesn't mean you're alone. Sometimes you can be alone and feel very satisfied. And sometimes you could be with a big group of people. I've done it and felt lonely, you know? Um, And, and I think that if well, I know when I was in pain before my shoulder and, and hip replacement, um, some of the social media posts triggered me because I was so uncomfortable, so not myself, that when I saw something fabulous, I was like, why not me? You know, and I said to my husband, I am not that person. Mm. But I realized later just how much pain I was living in because I was maybe thick headed and didn't want to give into any type of pain pills, including ibuprofen and Tylenol. Mm -hmm. But um, I know I've been triggered. So if you could tell me a little bit, like, how do you see that for your clients, for yourself? Did you, I I hope you've never been in the pain that I've been in. So hopefully that wasn't it. (laughs) No, I'm luckily I have not ever experienced that pain, but I think that, that goes for whenever anything doesn't feel quite right or whenever things aren't going how you want them to, uh, it can be more triggering than if things are going really well. So uh, a good example of this is um, there used to be someone that I used to see on social media and I just kind of got started kind of carving my own path and trying to learn the ropes of stuff. And this person used to trigger me so much <laughs> I used to see her post and think, how could you even imagine, how could you even think that this is something that could, people can do? Like how are people going to be trying to t- teach them and all that kind of stuff? I used to be so triggered. Um, and then I just realized uh, over time that her message wasn't for me at that time. Um, and what, what she was sharing at that time wasn't for me. And now she's my coach. So <laughs> I don't know how it changes. But I think that um, what our brains naturally do um, is when we see somebody else or see something mm-hmm. that somebody's posted, we're comparing ourselves. It's just a natural thing yeah. because yeah. back in when we were you know um cave people men men, and they would be thinking can i fight this man and can i win um Mm -hmm. and then as society evolved like us women we were always pitted against each other um, right because of things like the patriarchy back in maybe 50 years ago so we were looking at women am i a better mother am i better looking you know this am i that um so it's natural and it's something that's happened because of evolution centuries yeah not yeah like it's a century centuries long story um Mm -hmm. but social media kind of makes it 10 times more prevalent yes 10 times more people 10 times more outfits cars jobs um statements you know so i know people statements so i think that um it's it's nothing wrong with us that we're comparing ourselves because that's yeah. just that's just what our brains do but like we're responsible for taking that action and saying this is not what i'm going to do anymore and right. I'm gonna write a new story and whether that's you know that you decide to set boundaries with yourself or that you um go down like a path of self exploration where you get to know yourself mm-hmm. so much you don't really care um but it's there's nothing wrong with us for doing it it's natural but it's up to us because the only person that it's affecting really is us anyway yeah definitely and i i speak to that always um i love that you brought that up because i believe it's a choice that we mm-hmm. have every day all day kind of like voting 
Mm. And I believe, I believe it's our three time, money, and energy. And I think that when you start really voting with your time, money, and energy, where am I going to spend my time? What yeah. thrills me? What exhausts me? And I've worked with some clients even recently where we had to take a look at their friendships and is this really supporting you and what mm. your desires are and what your truths are? You know, no, it's not. And um, it's always a hard I like to say I'm a New Yorker. I move fast and I don't sugarcoat and it's the truth. Yeah. Um, and it, 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 I don't have thick skin, but I try to wear my armor on the days when I need to tell somebody something that's not so um, loving. You know, mm -hmm. it, it's coming from a loving space, but it's not something they really want to hear. And like you said earlier, when the message is right, right? It was somebody who was triggering you, but you realize, yeah, it, and now she's your coach, right? Yeah. <laughs> so you have this, and we, we, even as a yoga instructor years ago, decades ago, we were taught immediately, like, you are going to put, you're going to stretch people into a space of mind, body, and soul where something may release for them. And it may trigger them. You know, you get mm -hmm. somebody in pigeon opening up their deep into the gluten hip. And that usually in our hips, we hold emotions. So mm -hmm. that could trigger somebody of something that happened five days ago or 50 years ago. And and you might be the one who gets Wah! yelled at <laughs> or, or, you know, cried upon it, it, unexpected in front of a room of 30 other people. Um but even with this one client, I knew that the friendship she was speaking of, I, I, as a futurist, I could see, yeah, this is not for you. Mm. Of course, you think that she's doing something that feel makes it feel weird. But I know what the truth is. It felt weird for her because it was no longer right. Yeah. And I waited to the next week when we met again and I started, you know, giving her those little hints because you have, we have to wait for the student to be ready, right? When you were ready, you were like, I'm ready. She's my coach. This is thrilling. I can't believe it, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. But we do, we do have a choice with our time, money, and energy. And I, I, I like you, I have a, well, not like you. I personally have a love-hate relationship with social media. I see its blessings Yes. Um, and I realize I am able to empower some people through uh, social media, but I also realize it's very easy for me and I think anyone else to get sucked in where you you went in to do one thing and you come out 40 minutes later and you're like, you know, your eyes are spinning. <laughs> yeah, like you've just gotten off a roller coaster and you're doing yes. what you can and all this stuff is happening. Yeah, I totally relate. And I think as well, it's like um, the biggest, the biggest problem I feel is that especially um, maybe first thing in the morning or late at night, our brains are really yes. susceptible to information. So if you get on your phone and you see somebody and they're posting, I just got this new car and, you know, this yeah. is that I just got and it's amazing you could you could come off of the app feeling like you want that new car when you never wanted a new car in the first place right. you have got an amazing car or you don't care or you don't drive right. you, know, you don't have a driver's license but you're like worried about this car and and I think that yeah it's like sometimes you just need to really ask yourself and and give yourself space and sit with is this is this idea is this goal is this feeling mine or is it somebody right. else's? Especially yes. feelings one is huge because if somebody is an empath and they really yes. connect with energy, my daughter. they're watching mm -hmm. lots of sad content. This could yes. be films, it can be podcasts, and can be oh my yeah. gosh, listening to sad music or um, mm -hmm. mean music or rude music. Yeah. That have, all has such an impact on your brain and how you see things and how you experience things. So as an empath, you need to be even more careful about what you consume because it's like filtering your diet for what works for you. 
Yeah, absolutely. And and that's what I wrote down while you were speaking is, you know, I think it's important to ask ourselves, what are we feeding our brain? Mm. You know, and um, I'm a visual person. I have a, a empathy high in my chart. My daughter does too. Um, empathic abilities and it's very, it's very, very important to always ask. I ask her often, is this yours or someone else's? Especially yeah. when you're in a group, like a room full of people, like a classroom at school or at an office building. And then you add a, a cell phone where your social media, I love when you said a roller coaster, because it is, I lived in New York, North Carolina, now California. I have, um, friends and podcasters and clients, it's et cetera, and work with people like yourself around the world. And um it is it's like a roller coaster. Like which country was I just in? Because yeah. in the feed, in my feed, it doesn't categorize, oh, we're gonna start in New York, go to North Carolina, go here. Yeah. Then we'll go to in Hina in India and go to mm -hmm. Arnie and Bangkok <laughs> and visit, you know, Carrie Ann, Amanda and Abby in the UK. It yeah. doesn't do that. And it doesn't tell me, um, okay, now you're with in New Zealand with, you know, one of my favorite authors. It's just like a mishmash and yeah. um I even find myself sometimes like going, wait, where do I know this person from? Which like, was this my early, my childhood to early work career? Was this, you know, newlywed in Charlotte? Was this yeah. from traveling abroad? <laughs> you know, it's, it's because I've met people in Marrakesh that I became friends with. It does. And I said to my husband, sometimes I have to sit there and think, He's like, well, right. It expands our world mm. so much that we have people now, connections around the world, that it's no wonder it does feel like a roller coaster ride. So I like when you said yeah. that. a roller coaster and confusing, and you know, I I believe that we should try to keep our circles not small because some of us connect with really. Right. lots of people but like aligned like it should yeah. you should really have to see what becky your teacher <laughs> thinks about this new thing that's come out you know i think mm -hmm. that we should try and keep our when you have a vision and if you're someone yeah. who's got a vision and got a plan it's like really important to check who's in your life and feel aligned with them and i think that you mentioned friendships earlier um yeah. and i had like when I started, when I quit my job and was like, I'm going to make my dream life or whatever I was planning to do. Um, I was in a relationship and I realized very soon this is, this does not align. And I had friendships that I thought doesn't align. And yeah. I'd lost some friendships that I realized were really special. And, you know, I think that as things change, things change. Um, and the people in your life obviously change as well. So yeah. I think that it can be when you're on social media and you're connecting with so many different people, so many different places from different yeah. parts of life, you're connected with people that maybe you wouldn't be connected with anymore. And that's okay. Right. It doesn't mean there's anything wrong with those people. It just means that they're not, they're not your people anymore. So it's hard because yeah. then you're seeing posts from, you know, this friend who maybe you're not close with anymore or this right. uh, ex-colleague that you maybe didn't really like very much, but you're still connected mm -hmm. with them. And it's like they, they're they in your bedroom. Because right. They're, oh, they're totally. Your they're in your living room. They're in your kitchen and mm -hmm. they don't deserve to be. <laughs> yeah, that's a great, great point. And I know that, um, you know, I do ask clients to walk away from certain people in their life that are not, you know, sometimes it's relationships they've had for 20 years, you mm. know, and, and as sad as it is, that's why I work 24 seven with them to support them when they're like, you know, can I talk to you now? Because I'm feeling really lonely. Like this is the time I usually would have called my best yeah. friend whatever, you know, whatever, whoever the person was. And, um, I'm always there because I think there, we need support, someone to lift us up during that transition time. Nice. And I have somebody who, 
who left a few people behind and went down into that, hey, it's a little lonely. And I was like, trust me, please trust me. As we keep refining her for who she is, right? And kind of like a diamond, just polishing up, getting off those last few fingerprints um, and, you know, using that soft cloth and all of a sudden you, you hold up the diamond or even with tweezers you know, I said to her, people are going to start seeing you mm. and, and just approaching you for no, you know, just to like, and I said, pay attention to those people that you're attracting. And yeah. sure enough, sure enough, she attracted two women who reintroduced her to a cute guy that she had a mm -hmm. conversation with months earlier <laughs> And um, they were like, hey, you're single, aren't you? Did you did you ever meet this guy? He's our neighbor. We oh, like him. God. And she's like, I did meet him. I found him interesting. He, you know, and so it it's like, yeah, when we do, there is, and I, I always try to tell people, you know, be transparent. Mm -hmm. It's not easy to walk away from those things. It may not be easy to unfriend somebody Stop or to, to skip their post. But when we clean out our inboxes, our social media scrolls, when we clean out our friendship circles and let the let the dust settle um, in time, you know, you start attracting the, the people who you're meant to work with, be with, uh, share a cup of tea with, a glass of wine go vacationing with, you know? Yeah, a hundred percent. And I think that's like the key thing that stood out to me there about what you said is it's about um, a shift that happens when you put your attention back onto yourself, which is yes. feels uncomfortable for us because we all feel like that's <laughs> so selfish. Why would we focus on ourselves? And and it's always a used term as well, but when yeah. you're, when you're, primary focus is the other people so maybe it's the people in your life what mm -hmm. people are doing on social media what people are yeah. doing in business at the gym you know uh what what book they're reading when your primary focus is everything that everyone else is doing you actually lose yourself and yeah. when only when you come back to yourself and focus on that are you going to get the people that are really your people absolutely to your and it can be lonely like it's a really yeah. weird process i've been there um but it works out and i think that yeah i guess that's the key message is like focus on yourself without sounding so basic but it's no it's, okay. it's so true i i believe the answers are within within us yeah. i had someone i met with yesterday telling me that they were um they read a book and they changed their entire morning waking up way earlier than normal. And I was like, and how is that working for you? And they're like, well, I'm still in the first week. And I'm like, but are you a morning person? You know, like I'm all for a morning routine, uh, yeah. you know, a, a, a way of treating yourself beautifully first thing in the morning. I have my own routine and yeah. um, I'm all for that. But waking up at 5 a.m., I don't know that that's for everyone. And no. so... It was a very interesting conversation, and I, I believe that's crowdsourcing our confidence, one where mm. we take something we heard, and I had a client yesterday call me when I was in the car, and she's like, okay, I have a question. When we worked on this, you said that, and then I, someone said this, like, how rigid do I need to be? And it's like, she said, and then I remembered when you helped me, there's... Um, Feng Shui is right, Asian, uh, well, both are Asian. And then uh, Vashtu is is through the Indian culture, very, very similar ideas. And I helped yeah. her with some Vashtu for her home and her office. And she said, I remember when we were doing Vashtu and you said, now, you know, I almost said her name. I try not to share people's names, but yeah. she said, I remember, I remember you said to me now, Abby, we'll use your name. Yeah. Abby, we try our best. It doesn't mean it has to be exactly there. If that's not the best place in the room, because it looks yeah. out of out of sorts, you know. And yeah. she says, "So is it like that?" And I said, "Yes. It's it's always 
you know, I may ask somebody's opinion, certainly, right? Social media, I ask your opinion, but then I always have to run it past my own authority yes. and figure out how does this feel for me? Does it feel authentic or does it feel like I'm doing, you know, be trying to be someone else or trying to please a group of people that is not really my people, you know? So um, I love, I love what you said and shifting the attention onto ourselves. Yes. I, I know prior to teaching yoga and becoming um, practicing and teaching yoga that I felt that that would be selfish. Now it's mm -hmm. what I, people pay me for. So, you yeah. know, <laughs> and, me, and me too, like people come to me and they say, I follow this person and this person and I, I want to do this. And I'm like, oh, let's talk about you. <laughs> right. What's important here. Yeah, it's, it's so interesting. And I think it's also like what you said about um, finding what works for you. I think it's so great to learn. And yeah. I love to read. I, I've been reading personal development books since I was maybe 16. And mm -hmm. then I realized that it's okay to take what resonates and leave what doesn't. Oh, and good. also change your mind like the 5 a.m thing i can't think of anything worse than waking up at 5 a.m but in covid in during lockdown i loved it it was my thing i would get up early <laughs> take the dog out for a walk and that was my life and i loved my morning routine and i would swear yeah. by it but that's changed and that's okay yeah. and now i realized a bit like carrie ann that i'm like a night owl and i work yeah. really good i have really good ideas at night time yeah. and that's okay and that doesn't make me unprofessional or wrong it just right. means that i do what works for me absolutely and i think that's always the key and i think that to you know come full circle when we're constantly looking over our shoulder and looking outside of ourselves for who and you, you're making me laugh because I write articles for magazines and I I preach that only 90 percent uh, uh, that 90 percent of self-help doesn't help yeah. there's only really eight to ten percent that's really meant for Abby or meant for Gina and they may not yeah. be in the same book you know no. but um, <laughs> so so it, which is also ironic because I'm writing a book right now but um but yeah, looking outside of ourselves can be take us on that roller coaster ride, leave us feeling exhausted, and when mm. the truth really lies within. And so, making those choices of how you spend your time, money, and energy, and where you're focusing, and like you were talking about friendships, dating, you know, relationship, uh, love relationships, knowing when to, you know, the person's not you're not in alignment anymore. Maybe yeah. you outgrew, maybe, maybe you grew in different directions. I mean, it could be a whole different host of things. Maybe who you were when you started dating that person versus who you are now is, is very different with different needs, desires, aspirations. I see that all yeah. the time. Um, so Abby, I just got a glimpse at the clock and I need to, uh, let you go, but I would love to, uh, tell everyone that all your information is in the show notes, how to connect with you. And was there anything you wanted to add to that? Please do. No, you know what? Just that I had such a lovely time talking with you and I feel like we could go for hours and hours and hours, but it was really nice to, yeah, just explore that with you. And thank you for having me on Gina. Oh, you're, you're so welcome. You're so delightful. You're, <laughs> You glow from the inside out, and um, I do appreciate you sharing so transparently your journey, um, because I think sometimes, um, or I know, that mm -hmm. people are afraid of being judged. Um, I've been judged myself. It's it's still something, I'm still being judged, and I'm 55. Yeah. Like, Does this ever end, you know? Um, but no, it doesn't, and <laughs> you are correct. I just have to get used to it. But I think sometimes people don't want to speak out or give a voice to something like what it's like all the things we just spoke about. Um, mm. So I appreciate you sharing so transparently your own journey, those of your clients. I'd love to pull a card from yes. the opening to possibilities and see what we get today. Now, I did do a quick shuffle, but I'm going to try one more time to, okay. <laughs> to, to I'm go so through. I'm so excited. I think, <laughs> mom has, I think the mum has these in the house. She well. does. She does. Um, 
because your mom did a great job doing a photo shoot for Amazon for me. So yeah. um, I'll just thumb through and you tell me when to stop. So. This, this, uh, this one here. Stop Which now. one? Th is, is it this one? Big, this white one with the flower. Oh, okay. <laughs> of course this is you. <laughs> now, style. Wink, wink. Your signature style makes you uniquely you. And this definitely um, is your card. What is your What is your style? How did it unfold? And what does it say about you? And you can answer one, two, or all three. But this is it's perfect for you, Abby. <laughs> so, what were the questions? What is your style? Yeah. yeah. What is your style? How did it unfold, or how did it come about? And what does it say about you? What does it tell us? Um, I would say that my style in um, fashion and life is like always changing. And I think that that is as I change, it changes so much. So I yeah. look back at what I was maybe wearing or doing. And obviously this is part of growing up as well. Um, I look back at what I was doing a year ago and I'm like, what is that? What am I doing? My <laughs> communication style, my relationship style, my fashion um it's changing and I, I feel that I'm gonna change a lot over the path of my life and I think that there'll be a point where I figure out what it what it is but I think that my path is definitely going to be there's a lot of changing happening yeah um, yeah and it's ever evolving I would say <laughs> probably so, I, I, am, I am laughing Abby because I am in this house uh three and a half years and um, I think this is the third color of my office. <laughs> I love I love change. My hair has kind of stayed the same because it's fast and easy. Now I know who to cut, who to get it cut by, and how to style it. But um, yeah, I, I I love moving things around. My husband's like, "Did you move the furniture again? Did you yeah. buy new pillows?" Do you? So ever changing, yeah. ever evolving um is is exactly uh, i am very much similar so I, <laughs> I love that that was awesome and you are so delightful i really appreciate our time together and your transparency and the wealth of information you brought and shared today because i think that social media has definitely a great place um mm. in in uh, of importance but we have to individually decide for ourselves. And if you have young children, what are you allowing them and how long are you allowing them? And the point that you made about early morning, late night is oh, also I phenomenal. I think people need to hear that and realize the impact that it could have on a, especially a young child, but also yourself you're starting your morning don't you want to yeah. start with something that that fuels you for me it's my hot cup of tea and and playing with my new puppy and because yeah. my three my three-year-old dog likes to sleep in so, <laughs> so it's, the, it's, yeah, the, the it's the puppy and myself in my pajamas with a cup of tea um yeah. maybe one day toby will join us but right now he likes to be <laughs> Not he's in his lazy, lazy. Yes, he, he needs fine. his coffee first. You know, he <laughs> likes to sleep in and have a late coffee. I think he knows if I play with the, the puppy, he, the puppy will not bite his ankles for another yes. like thirty <laughs> minutes to forty five minutes. So um, he's oh, like, yeah. yeah, let let mommy get her ankles bitten. But thank you, <laughs> thank you so much. You're you're so delightful, and the wealth of information you bring, and from a different perspective. Obviously, growing up with Snapchat, unlike myself, who didn't know what Snapchat was, or a cell phone. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you for that, Abby. Of course. Thank you so much for having me, Gina. You're welcome. And if you're at a point in your life where you're ready to step into something bigger and bolder and really be able to make those decisions for time, money, and energy and leave crowdsourcing behind, I'd love to connect with you. Reach out to me here in the show notes. If you're on Apple, I'd love for you to leave a one to three sentence review 
on YouTube, leave me a comment. Until next time, be exquisite.